Hi and welcome back to another fun card making video. Today I'm happy to join Alta New for their new release and instead of showing you all the products, I know that this can be very overwhelming, I decided to pick my top 3 favorites. So if I had to choose just 3, these are the ones that I would go for, I'm going to share lots of examples using them and let's start by taking a quick look on the products. First of all, I picked this uh, standalone die set. This is called Globe Builder and it's one of my favorites because I do love playing with uh, die cuts. But also, if you are a fan of uh, snow globes, then you get two different sizes here, plus trees and lots of garlands as well as snow banks and little bits and pieces to create a um, snowman. If you don't have something similar in your stash, I'm sure you'll have lots of fun and it is very versatile, you can grab it every year for winter and the holiday season. I also picked two stamp sets from this new collection. This is the Floral Hallows and I think this is a stamp set that is super pretty and can be used all year round. It gives you lovely bouquet of flowers and circles that you can use to add your sentiment inside. These circles have different designs and they are very elegant. You really don't need to fuss too much with um, how you can design a card, just a circle with a sentiment inside. Embellish it with flowers and you are good to go. For my third top favorite, I just had to pick something for the holidays. So this is called Lovely Ornaments, lovely big circles that you can embellish with different designs, lots of sentiments to play with. I like this because they are big focal points that really make a statement. And really you don't have to use those as ornaments, instead of stamping that little hanger at the top, you can omit that and create something completely different. So let's start with the first example for today. I'm starting with the flower stamp set, the Floral Hallows, and I'm going to share three cards because once you get started, you cannot stop. So I'm stamping a bunch of these flowers. I'm using my permanent ink by Altenew. This is alcohol friendly because I'm planning to use my alcohol markers. So I'm just going to share how I like to store my Altenew markers. All four of them that I know match perfectly together are stored in this 3D printed little cup. I did use the labels provided by Altenew. I usually avoid playing with alcohol markers. I find it quite overwhelming to try and find which color matches which and how I'm going to end up with a perfect blending. I prefer designing cards rather than coloring actually. So I think that with this system and now that everything is nicely organized, I'm going to grab for my alto new markers more and now I'm going to give them some more love that they definitely deserve. So for coloring my flowers, I went with uh, the set, which is called Cherry Blossom, one of my favorites for sure. I keep on grabbing them again and again. And for my greens, I'm using the set, which is called Green Valley. I'm using the matching dies to die cut the designs. I will also need a circle. For that, I'm going to use one that has a tiny little circles all around. And once you pick it up from the stamp set, you will find that it is very flexible, so you need to be very careful when you place it on your stamping block or on your misty, because it may stamp wonky and then you won't be able to die cut it correctly. One thing you can do is to first die cut a circle and then stamp directly on top of your die cut. I did it the other way around and it worked just fine. You will see that it's not perfect, but after all, a part of the circle is going to cover it up with the flower embellishments. So I'm going to make sure that, that the imperfection is going to be under that. Now I want my circle to be golden. That's why I did stamp with um, embossing ink and I'm going to apply gold embossing powder. I just want to make sure that the embossing powder is everywhere and then I'm going to grab my heat gun to make sure that all the embossing powder is completely melted and I will use the matching die to cut it out. And this is where you may find that those two circles don't perfectly match but uh, that's what I mentioned before, it has to do with how you stick your stamp on top of your stamping block. Anyway, I'm going to grab this uh, favorite of mine from a previous release. I think it was from the September release, this one. I keep on using it again and again. I love the different layers. I'm going to cut out the panel. 
that has that lovely distressed look on the edges. I did tie cut a circle on the inside and now I'm making sure without sticking that uh, panel on top of my card base where my sentiment is, is going to fall. I want my sentiment to uh, pop against that pink background so that's why I'm going with white embossing here. The sentiments are from the same stamp set as the flower and the circle and I went with you are amazing. There are many different phrases that you can mix and match to create your sentiment in this one. But with the circle that I'm going for, you can fit pretty much any sentiment inside. And you have probably guessed by now that I'm going for a shaker card. The moment I see a circle that I can cut out a window with, I cannot stay away from at least one shaker card. So that's what I'm going for now. I did go with a double sided tape all around the back of my window. I'm going to place on top my acetate. And for this card, I do have uh, two more cards to show you that I didn't uh, share the whole process, but I hope that they will inspire you and see different styles on how you can use this stamp set. Anyway, I'm going to add some glue on the front of my panel all around the edges so that I can stick the circle inside. This, uh, this ring is the one that I die cut and has that lovely embossing design on top, the golden embossing on top. It gives a lovely finished look on a window and at the same time it is very elegant with that uh, lovely golden embossing on top of it. Now I'm using foam tape and I'm going all around my window at the back to make sure that I don't leave any openings where my shaker mix may fall out. If you peel off your foam tape before you try to align it all around, you will find that it is easier to follow the curve. This is a shaker mix that I absolutely love using. It's by Studio Katia and uh, it is completely flat. It is iridescent, it gives that shine that you want and the shaker element, but at the same time it's not going to be too bulky inside the window, so you don't have to make it too thick for the confetti to move around. Now I'm sticking everything down to decorate my window and to finish it off I just used some enamel dots from the cherry blossom set that matches perfectly with the colors of the markers that I used for the flowers. And before we move on to the close-up photos, here is a look on how my panel looks at the moment. I'm going to stick that on top of a top folding card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Here's another idea with a holiday vibe to it, just by using these colors and changing the sentiment you can have a Christmas card if you want. I used an embossing folder for the background to add some interest. I used the ring and the sentiment inside and again embellished with the flowers and a few nouveau drops. And here is a monochromatic idea, if you don't like to color, you don't have to. I just stamped the images, but since it is so plain, I stamped it many times so that I could stack one flower on top of another to add dimension. In the close-up photos you will see that I have some dots of glitter cardstock on the berries as well as at the center of the flowers. You can of course use gems for that. I just used this tie that I used it for the outside panel and this is again from the mix and match frames. I placed that on top of my glitter silver glitter cardstock and used the tiny little dots that that frame cut out for the berries. So here are some close-up photos on the first three cards that I made using one of my favorite picks from the October release by Altenew. Don't go away, I do have two more cards to share with you and uh, as a reminder this is part of a blog hub so make sure to visit my blog you will find there details on how you can enter the giveaways. Also don't forget to like this video and leave me a comment down below if you like the idea of sharing my top three favorites from new releases. So let's move on to the second stamp set from this release and this is one perfect for holidays. You can mix and match the stamps to create your ornaments. So many different options provided here. However, I'm going the super quick way. I will only use the dies and use a sentiment from the stamp set. So I looked through my stash and I found this glitter cardstock. I have no idea where I have it from. I'm going to cut out three ornaments out of this one. And I do have that lovely snow for the top of my ornaments, which I'm going to cut out from white cardstock again three times. Putting them together is super easy, it's just a matter of sticking the snow on top of the circle and I did use some gold cardstock to cut out the top again three times and stick it on top of your ornament. 
Now these ornaments are just stunning. I think they would make a great gift tag as well. You can just stamp to and from at the back and use some thread at the top. But since I'm going for a card, I'm using one of my favorite color recipes when it comes to Christmas cards, red, white and craft. And to make the background more interesting, I'm going to use one of the Alte New embossing folders. This is a new one, by the way. It's called Layered Snowflakes. And if I had to pick a fourth favorite, that would be it for sure. So I'm going to lay the panel on top of that, run it through my die cutting machine, and it gives a beautiful design, a really embossed. This is a 3D embossing folder after all. You can leave it as it is, it gives a subtle texture at the background, however I'm going to make it more visible. I'm going to run around my ink pad. This is a pigment ink by Simon Says Stamp in white. I'm going only over the edges in the beginning just to create a kind of a border and then I'm going to swipe very lightly the ink pad over the embossed areas. The mountains of the embossing are going to pick the white and it's going to make it even more visible. For two of the ornaments I'm using glue so that they are going to lay flat on top of my panel and then for one of them I'm using foam tape at the back to add some dimension. It is a stunning card design but at the same time it's not time consuming. All you have to do if you want to mass produce it for your Christmas cards this year is to create the ornaments just by die cutting, then emboss all your uh, backgrounds and then just stick everything together. Now I'm going to add an extra element. I love to have different textures on a card. So that's why I grabbed my Alte New golden thread and I'm going to uh, thread it through the top of the ornament and I will secure that at the back with some tape. And you can easily recreate the same design but having different colors of ornaments or differently embellished just by using the stamp set. And here are some close-up photos on this card. I absolutely love the color combo and look how stunning the background is. And finally let's move on to my third pick for today and this time I'm going to play with dies. There are two different sizes for your snow globe. I decided to create the snowman inside. It fits on the smaller one, but I'm going for the big one just to have a bigger statement that it will cover up pretty much the whole car front. Uh, there are two circles for the snowman, the eyes, the nose. You can have uh, some tweaks for his head. There is a little hat. And then I'm going to use the trees to cut them out. I will use the two dies for the snow globe and the one for the bottom. So I'm going to do the die cutting and here are all the parts ready to go. It's just a matter of um, putting everything together. And you can embellish your snowman even more if you want. You can have a second circle for his body to make him taller. You can give him a scarf if you like by using some pattern paper for example. You can uh, give him some buttons for his uh, main body. Just uh, be creative. You can even embellish his hat for example. I'm going to stick the hands and then and I'm not going to add anything extra on him. I'm just going to keep him nice and plain. Now again for this card I'm going for a shaker element. So we'll start by sticking the acetate on the blue frame. And then I have cut out lots of those frames in white to stack one on top of the other to create the depth that I need for my uh, shaker mix. If you want, you can also use foam tape, very thin however, so that uh, it doesn't show as you go all around that thin frame. So I believe I have here four of them stuck one on top of the other. So now it looks like a lovely chipboard, nice and thick. And then I'm going to stick my top frame with the acetate on top of that. So my top window is ready. I can place it on top of my background so you can see the thickness. I'm going to leave it aside to dry and let's work on the background now. Let's stick the snow bag at the bottom. And I have a bunch of trees that I cut out. I'm not going to use all of them. However, I'm going to use a lighter and a darker shade just for some interest. By the way, I used the snowbank die at the bottom of those trees so that I get the curve and I don't stick cardstock over cardstock since I want to avoid too much dimension inside my snow globe. I'm also adding some detail. That's not something that you have to do, but I love little details. So I'm using my white gel pen to add some snow on top of the trees and I will also draw some snow, some dots at the background. 
Although I will have confetti inside, I like to have uh, snow always on the background. Now it's time to stick my snowman always with glue completely flat so that I don't get too much dimension inside the globe. Now I'm going to add my snow. Again, I'm using the same confetti that I used in the first card and stick the top panel on top. It is a lovely embellishment, love the shaker element and the snowman is so cute and you can easily use it as a gift tag. Just use some thread and tie it at the top and at the back you can stamp to and from. So let's uh, turn this into a card, really easy to do. Again I'm using the snowflake embossing folder. I'm using white paper this time. I'm not going to do any inking on the embossing. I love how it looks white on white. It does give texture and it is visible in real life. Now my embellishment is already dimensional so I'm just going to stick it with glue flat on top of my card base. Then there is the base for the snow globe that you can place it underneath. For that I went with foam tape at the back just to make sure that this is going to be leveled with the actual dimension of the snow globe. And I did use the die that cuts out that lovely bow out of silver glitter cardstock. I'm going to place it on top of my base to embellish it a little bit more and all I have to do is to just add a sentiment. So these were the cards for today, using my top 3 picks from the latest release by Altenew. If you check out the release, do leave me a comment down below and let me know which were your top 3 favorites, I would love to know. Just like always, you will find links to everything I used down below in the description area as well as on my blog. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.